Okay, great. Brandon, we are back for a monster episode today. Uh, it is going to be fun. Um, now, this yeah. week, we are going to be talking about a not a controversial one, but I do think that um, a lot more uh, you know, influencers, I wouldn't, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to use like, I don't like to use the word influencers, but a lot more uh, people could actually talk about, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot more smarter than us, of course, can talk about a little bit about, uh, about this um, topic is, you know, how can we tell if somebody is natty or not? Okay, so we're talking a little bit about natural bodybuilding. So just to be a little bit more specific, we talk a little bit about natural bodybuilding and enhanced bodybuilding. So we're going to dig deep a little bit about that. But before we do that, of course, uh, you know, Brandon, you are about what, four months out, 16 weeks about that, 16 weeks um, out from your show. So I'm actually, I think 10 weeks out from like the BC Cup. So Definitely getting close to that one for the Vancouver show, I believe. Yeah. It's like 16, 15 weeks out or something like that. All right. Um, but that yeah, it's been it's been pretty good. I can tell, like, especially the last couple of days, like, I can tell, like, you know, when you start to get into that spot where you feel like you're almost dragging your feet a little bit more, I can feel that sensation coming on a little bit more. And, like, naturally, I'm, like, getting a little bit less steps in each day. So I can feel, like, or like subconsciously, I'm just like not quite moving as much as I was a couple of weeks ago. So I have to just actively move a bit more. Um, but for the most part, like training's been still pretty solid. Nutrition's been uh, good. Hunger, yeah, it's definitely starting to ramp up a bit more. I do notice that I'm getting like hungrier. Uh, like in between my meals, usually I was like satisfied um, after my meals and I could wait now I can feel like the urge to want to consume before my next meal um, and like starting to get a little bit hungrier after meals uh, during the evening meals so like there's a couple components there but uh, for the most part it's been going really well um, definitely it's been like the easiest prep I've done so far which is which is awesome but yeah if you guys haven't seen it go check his uh, Instagram out he's posted his uh his progress on his stories every now and then. So uh, I think he's doing a little bit more now. And then also he's got a YouTube channel. So go ahead and he's going to be vlogging his, uh, his progress uh, for this year's prep. And it's going to be really exciting. So I recommend you guys check that out on his Instagram page, which we will have in the description below. If you're on YouTube, if you're not on YouTube, then if you're just listening, go check out YouTube. We have all the links in there. But speaking of bodybuilding, which is what we're going to be doing this year, uh, you know, we built bodybuilding. We've been, we've been doing, right. We've been doing for quite a bit, for quite a while now. And uh, for all the clients and all the gym, you know, gym members that we've seen over the past, I don't know how many years, uh, bodybuilding has been, you know, been, you know, both competitive and in a lifestyle manner. You know, some people build, you know, just do bodybuild just, you know, just for their own sake, uh, just for their own aesthetic pleasings. Uh, but for some of us, like for the both of both of us, you know, we we do it in a more competitive level. You know, we want to, we really want to like take that uh, aesthetic physique and then take it to the next level and then we want to step on stage you know that's so i think um and everybody's really excited everybody when we're talking about bodybuilding um let's say in a gem pop um not really in this our competitive level which we like we nitpick every single detail out of it and just the generalized bodybuilding level uh if you talk to somebody about bodybuilding everybody's going to think about uh oh i don't want to be that big where my head is like tiny and then my my body's like extremely muscular so I think what they're referring to is whatever they're seeing on the, oh, shoot, I almost said the cover of magazines. That doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> um, but we're really talking about uh, what's on social media. So everybody who's actually marketing, uh, who's our Mr. Olympias, and anybody who has been um, on a the grandest stage of Mr. Olympia, that's the grandest stage of bodybuilding. That's the Olympics uh, for bodybuilders. And that's the that's, it doesn't get any bigger than that. So yeah. every everybody there on Mr. who actually steps on stage, I would say ninety nine point nine percent of them potentially are enhanced. Yeah, I would 100%. for men at, for men at least for men at least, right? Yeah, like <laughs> women. They, like, I don't know. Yeah, even for some of like the bikini or like majority of the bikini competitors, I feel like I've heard a lot of stories about like majority of them being on stuff. So like, it's yeah, it's. 
when you're looking at that when nobody's getting tested on those stages people are trying to compete at the highest level and like since there's no restrictions or no testing they're going to do whatever is necessary to bring the best outcome and for a lot of those kind of people it's going to result in like taking performance enhancing drugs right absolutely yeah but i mean like that's that being one thing that being one thing is um i want to scale back a little bit just before we dig deep into what these are you know we want to explain to everybody that you know there is a difference between enhanced bodybuilding which i'm sure majority of the you know population should know by now there's enhanced bodybuilding and there's natural bodybuilding now me and you so just to get that clear out uh myself and um uh well me obviously i do natural bodybuilding for so just for you guys who don't know because brandon is a very very big so he's also a very big dude he's is also natural at least i hope so <laughs> yeah i'm not um, a bit, dude i'm like 177 pounds right now <laughs> okay all right see there you go <laughs> so uh, so brandon is clarified he is also natural so we do natural bodybuilding and you know what is like why don't you explain to like everybody like you know what is uh some of the things about natural bodybuilding yeah, so for natural body, I find that common thing that or misconception is like people think that you can't take like creatine or you can't take like supplements from the supplement store is like that's not considered natural when those things are still allowed in the fitness industry. Like all of like the supplements from the supplement stores like creatine, um, omegas, um, pre-workout, all that stuff is totally fine for natural bodybuilding as those kind of supplements don't create like a very significant uh, gain from them and they're more so found naturally in food items and stuff like that whereas obviously with the enhanced side when you are playing around with the hormones more like getting testosterone um, all the different components trampoline all of that kind of stuff I don't have that much knowledge around those kind of compounds uh, but that's obviously if you're taking those kind of things or if you're taking sh sh uh, SARMs um, you are going to be considered natural anymore you cannot compete in the natural federations um so i just wanted to point out that that you can still take supplements you can still take creatine you can still take pre-workout caffeine that is allowed in the natural federations um but yeah in terms of natural bodybuilding um again you can still make solid gains being a natural athlete but when it comes to how much actual muscle mass you can put on you are going to be restricted um, in most people's lifetime in terms of being a natural bodybuilder if you do it for your whole life um, you're looking at gaining between 20 to 40 maybe possibly up to 50 pounds of actual muscle throughout your whole lifting career um, obviously there's going to be some genetic components to that some people may be naturally be able to build a bit more muscle some people may not be able to build up quite as much some people who are more consistent with their training and their nutrition obviously are going to be at a better spot to consistently gain muscle if you're super inconsistent you're not going to gain a bunch um, but yeah from a muscle growth standpoint yes you can still gain a good chunk of muscle i find since so many of us look at all these people online and since there's so many people out there that aren't natural um it's it ruins people's perception of what can actually be achieved naturally um and there's a lot of people like for example our coaches like brian minor um jeff albert Alberto nunez and stuff like that they're a fine representation of what can actually be achieved naturally and how, the transformation you can actually make um so you can definitely still create a big, uh, great physique from it. Uh, but from like a recovery aspect, since you aren't taking as many components or as many um, hormones and all that kind of stuff, when you are natural, the recovery isn't going to be as great. Um, so you're probably not going to be able to train with as much training volume volume and training as frequent and all that because you have to look at your natural resources um so yeah the fatigues management side of things you're probably not going to be able to do as much uh training volume when you are a natural athlete compared to a more enhanced person um and when it comes down to actually peaking as a natural bodybuilder you'll notice if you've ever been to a natural bodybuilding show typically the guys that do the best are in their late 30s uh mid or like through their 40s through their 50s and like <laughs> still still killing it with natural bodybuilding and that's usually where you start getting cl really close to your genetic peak whereas on the enhanced side a lot of those guys are 
like peaking like in their mid 20s early 30s and stuff like that um so it definitely yeah it does take a little bit longer to peak with being a natural athlete um but uh yeah other than that um i could talk go into yeah a bit more of the kind of advantages i would say of um or i guess oh yeah <laughs> um there's another component where with everybody on social media or a good chunk of people on social media um a lot of those individuals are taking stuff to um enhance their physique and sometimes or a lot of the times they're claiming that they're natural or they just don't talk about the stuff that they're actually putting in their body and then all of these kids that are in their like 15 or in their teens or early 20s are looking at these guys and they're thinking oh if i just take these um like natural supplements um that they're promoting that i'll be able to achieve that specific look when realistically it's not going to happen <laughs> for those individuals if yeah like obviously training consistency is a huge thing nutrition everything has to be locked in um as a natural athlete in order to continue building muscle over time um but um i'm trying to <laughs> lose my train of thought with this one do you want to go into this a bit more yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think you make a, you know, we just start trailing off about all the, you know, disadvantages and we start making comparisons to natural body to enhanced bodybuilding. I think there's, um, it's, it's sort of the same sport, but it's also different. Um, saying that from experience and personal, um, you know, we have closer friends who are enhanced bodybuildings. And before we get into that, um, you know, some of the, uh, we see the you know big difference between as you said you know we uh, as natural bodies we we take a little bit longer to peak uh, compared to enhance so that plays a big role in you know like your training uh, age you know like of course you know what what age you actually start bodybuilding uh, will also you know affect the outcome uh, uh, in what age you would actually peak uh, but again, uh, as on, uh, I think I do want to make a, a point that you kind of trailed off a little bit there, just echoing what you're trying to say is, uh, you know, on social media, you know, the majority of you actually finding uh, uh, very impressive physiques people or influencers, yeah, they, they may or may not have, um, you know, the, uh, any enhancements within their, within their body um, the, because they just have that image, that social media, or even even dating back to the 1950s, that that is the male or female physique uh, to have in order to make yourself, you know, perfect. That is the perfect physique. So in reality, you know, in reality, but in reality, in the gen pop, or even in saying that in natural bodybuilding, nobody really actually sees that. And I was watching this documentary on Netflix. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it was talking about this uh, murder case about this female bodybuilder who actually killed his, her husband. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, watch that. It's really, really cool. Um, IFBB, uh, they actually made a show for uh, Not the Enhanced, and the feedback wasn't all that great. So therefore, apparently, according to you know the, uh, the population who actually likes bodybuilders, they like to see... Uh, monsters. The other you see, like people are very, very, very large muscle because it's unachievable to general population. Uh, natural physique bodybuilders, yeah, it's still it's still within reach because it's still natural. All all we're kind of saying, like ev like the, the the message we're bringing out there is you can achieve this physique. Um, however, it's not as impressive as the ones we see on social media. But if I, they, they get, I get that belief is if we spend the time and effort, I could achieve that, which is true. I wouldn't say it's not true, uh, but that's, that's where we're kind of stuck is everybody thinks like that is this, this physique is not reachable, but your natural physique is. So that's also probably the downside of natural bodybuilding isn't as, um, isn't as impressive on social media compared to enhanced lifters. But I think with the, you know, we have a lot of more beneficial stuff. I think people are trying to miss about natural bodybuilding. Um, you know, like what are, what are some of like, what is your take on some of the really good advantages of that? Yeah, for sure, man. So I would definitely say the longevity side of things, like you can be a natural bodybuilder and compete like the majority of your life. You can compete up into your sixties. 
um, possibly 70s or 80s if you really, really wanted to. Um, but like, since you're not uh, taking these harsh compounds that are probably going to have negative um, effects on your body long term, like, yeah, obviously, if you are taking enhancements, and you do it in a safe way, and you have a proper coach and stuff, you can minimize those effects. Um, but there's still no matter what probably going to have an impact on your overall life, you're not going to be able to take high doses of it for a very long duration. Um, so as a natural athlete, you can continue um, uh, competing for a long duration and not have to deal with like hormonal imbalances, not have to deal with the stress of your health and stuff with that the drugs and stuff like that so it's just going to be safer and you're going to be able to do it for a lot longer and you're going to be able to have a still an awesome physique when you are getting into your 50s and 60s um, and stuff like that and still have a solid physique i find with a lot of guys that are enhanced they'll reach their peak physique at yeah the, the age of 30 maybe mid 30 or whatever um, and then after that their body is just tapped out from taking all the drugs and stuff like that and then their physique just declines right after because they have to due to health purposes so it, you're with the enhanced side of things you just can't compete for as long so i would say natural bodybuilding is definitely a lot better um, from that perspective and yeah uh, also with the, your gains too like if you're somebody that is enhanced and you're having to come off of this stuff due to health reasons, you're going to be losing a good chunk of mass that you did gain when you're on stuff. Whereas with a natural athlete, you can keep those gains. You continue um, to progress into your later years of life. Like obviously at some point when you reach like 50 or 60, you're probably not going to be able to continue adding muscle to your frame, but you can do a good job at relatively maintaining or just, um, maybe losing a slight amount of muscle here and there um, later on in life. But again, it's not going to be as dramatic as somebody that is on stuff. Their physique is going to change so much when they're in their 30, 30s compared to how their physique is going to look in their 60s. Whereas with a natural athlete, it's looking at them in the 30, 30s and looking at them in their 50s, 60s, um, they're going to look relatively similar, which is going to be, which is awesome. Um, but uh, another thing is with natural bodybuilding, um, for most people, yeah, it's going to be a lot more sustainable um, long term. And um, like I was kind of pointing out before, you're going to be able to compete for a longer duration. Um, you're not going to suffer uh, the health consequences that you could possibly suffer if you're taking enhancements, if you're, especially if you're not doing it properly. Um, but um, yeah, in terms of natural bodybuilding as well, I do notice that a lot of people that are natural tend to use a lot more science and are a lot more <laughs> knowledgeable when it comes to their training, their fitness, um, and the recovery and stuff like that. They, they really hone in on all those factors. Not to say that the Hans guys don't, but a lot of them, the Hans guys rely solely on the drugs. Um, and their genetics and not so much on actual proper training and proper nutrition. Uh, I'm not saying like all of the guys went like that, but there is a good chunk of uh, enhanced guys that their training form, their knowledge around programming and knowledge around nutrition isn't as good as it possibly could be. So um, a lot of people use it more so they think that, oh, I'm just going to take this so I don't have to be as good with my training and my nutrition. Um, so that can be a component of it as well. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a lot of shitting on enhanced bodybuilding. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, and again, like, I know there's a lot, a lot of, there's a, no, there, there is a lot of very knowledgeable guys that are enhanced that use the appropriate approaches to training and do everything right. But there are some people that tend to abuse um, it. And yeah, their nutrition and their training isn't quite where it could uh, possibly be in terms of optimal, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> probably just saying that probably just lost half of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but yeah, um, I do I do agree on uh, on parts that you would say about natural bodybuilding and that it is, uh, I think we mentioned this before. It is an old man sport. It is a very old man sport. We we can continuously doing that. And then I, I think it, I think I find it very interesting where you actually start to mention is where the natural bodybuilding and when we're in our fifties and sixties, of course we can still compete, but we can still apply natural bodybuilder training uh and incorporate it as we as a prevention of muscle loss uh when we're up in the 60s 
I mean, yeah, you're right. Uh, as age grows, you know, as I probably talked about in a, in a previous uh, uh, episode, that the older we get, our fat-free mass will, you know, will just decline dramatically, you know, due to old age. It's just how we're just biologically built. But using this bo uh, natural bodybuilding programming or this approach, it could turn it to a lifestyle into a maintenance phase once you're actually up in the uh, up in your 50s and 60s which i think that shows that really reflects on uh, the sustainability of uh, uh of natural bodybuilding which is a very very important message which uh is going to probably lead to of course it all ties together which you know longevity you'll probably be healthier over time you know you're not uh, you're not just being an athlete when you're young and then all of a sudden you're sedentary once you're uh, once you're past 50, you're like, yeah, you know, fuck this. I'm just going to be lazy and just sit there. Um, so I think that's a really, really uh, a big highlight of uh, natural body on the really, really good highlight. So uh, and uh, I think that's I think that would be, you know, sufficient to close out the natural bodybuilding, you know, stats. But now because you've been, we've been shitting on uh, enhanced bodybuilding uh, for quite a bit, I think we. I think we, there's a couple of things that you already mentioned on the disadvantages in between. So just to remind on some of the, you know, it does require, you know, a lot of like uh, constant monitoring of your blood work, uh, your hormones and all that stuff. Uh, this is, you know, already in the open. It's not news. Uh, it's something that you have mess. We will pay, you know, those enhanced bodybuilders will have to pay attention to. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you would say that they peak around the 20 to 30. So they actually seem to peak a little bit earlier than us. And then things start to fall off because, you know, it's either because of an increase of health problems. Therefore, they probably have to scale back on the PEDs or something something else might uh, come up that they probably can't do this long term. It's a very short term uh, thing for some individuals. So besides these two which I would say is, uh, you know, a larger, a larger reason of the, you know, maybe the, the downside of uh, enhanced bodybuilding. What are some of the more of the, you know, restrictive downsides to, to enhanced bodybuilders? Yeah, I would say like, since they can recover, um, easier, like faster with taking the PEDs, um, typically they're going to be in the gym a little bit longer than somebody that is possibly um, natural, like since they can handle a little bit more volume. Um, it's not always the case, but that's usually how it is. Um, but there's also a cost component to it as well. So if you are taking PEDs, um, that's also more money out of your bank account. So if you're already in a bad place in terms of financials um yeah you're gonna it's going to be an extra stressor to that um but yeah in in terms of like diets and stuff like that i i don't think the diets will be much different obviously there's you're gonna have to consume more calories than if you're a natural like if you're more enhanced um you're gonna have more muscle mass on you so you're gonna have to be spending more money on food as well and consuming more calories and probably having a even harder time getting the food down. I don't know personally. I I know a lot of guys that are enhanced and they're eating like six, seven thousand calories in their off season. I can imagine trying to force feed that much food down. So that's that's definitely something. Uh, it's gonna consume more of your time with eating, but also a little bit more time possibly with training um and yeah so those are probably like the biggest ones i would say but like you mentioned like obviously being more aware of your overall health is going to be a huge thing to make sure your blood pressure all your health markers are at a decent spot um because if they do start to tank you got to make sure you're staying on top of that because yeah there's a lot of people especially in the past like 10 years especially between the ages of 20 to 30 uh, 30s that it, a lot of these guys have passed away due to um, taking these kind of enhancements and I'm sure some of it's due to bad protocols with the PEDs and stuff like that as well like it's probably another con contributor to that um, so if you are going to be going to this enhanced side you want to make sure that you are finding somebody that is very knowledgeable and is focused on your health rather than just focus on you placing the best at that show so Absolutely. Absolutely. So now we've talked, we, yeah, I think, um, I think everybody's aware of, uh, as long as we're, everybody's aware of all the risk, 
uh, on, you know, enhanced bodybuildings, you know, let's talk about the fun stuff now. Let's, what is, what is, uh, you know, what is the good stuff about going on PEDs? So in terms of building muscle mass, yeah, you are going to speed up that process a lot more compared to if um, you are taking the more natural route. So like obviously building muscle, um, being able to compete at the highest possible level, especially if you're somebody that's very consistent with your training, your nutrition, have everything down on point and have a good solid level of genetics, um, then you can possibly make it to the pro, uh, pro level, get your pro card in the IFBB Federation and possibly even make it to um, the Olympia stage. So like you have a higher chance of achieving all these successes in bodybuilding. Um, and typically with that side of things too, um, the more enhanced side, like people love watching just monsters, right? They love seeing people with these most insane physiques ever. So you tend to get more attention if you are on the enhanced side, um, with your social media content, with, um, your competitions and stuff like that. And possibly with sponsorships too, um, there's probably, you're probably going to be at a, be able to get these easier than if you were more natural um so there's some of those kind of things in terms of strength too you're going to be able to lift more weight while being enhanced um yeah just overall you're going to be able to take your physique to that next extreme um so yeah those i would say would be like the main positives of taking enhancements <laughs> yeah but um so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot now, after we talked about these two, I think there's a lot of um, controversial uh, uh, comments out there in, in on social media, on digital world, uh, especially on influencers, not actually like athletes, right? Uh, athletes, uh, we see them on stage. And then, uh, you know, if, if we determine them, if it's an open or natural show. Uh, more or less but for influencers they don't compete they just show their amazing physique on social media so and then there and then we start getting you know people commenting and say hey like i don't know about you but i get my clients ask me like show me this like influencer I say hey man is do you think this guy's natural <laughs> i don't even yeah. get that yeah i don't even get that yeah. but i get that so how do you tell you know how would you tell if somebody is on peds or if they're natural so I would say the biggest thing is their total body weight and the percent of uh, uh, fat mass that they have. So if if somebody is like 240 pounds and they're like um, five or six percent body fat, the likelihood of them being natural is very, very, very extremely low. <laughs> I would say it probably even with the most genetic freak out there being 240 pounds is just, and shredded is just not going to be the you're not able to build that much ma muscle mass being natural. So like looking at somebody's weight and the level of conditioning, um, I would say would be the, the biggest thing. There are other things like trap sizes, shoulder sizes, like typically the guys that are enhanced tend to have a bit more muscle around their traps, have to have a bit rounder delts and stuff like that. But there are some genetic, um, there are some guys that are genetic freaks that are in natural bodybuilding that do have quite well developed traps and delts, but that is a big component to it though. If you see somebody that always struggles, struggle to grow their like delts, um, and then out of nowhere after a year, they just have these giant um, bowling balls and delts, then there's probably a good sign that they're probably taking some form of an enhancement. But there's also like different um, fat free mass. Um, index like scales and stuff and like equations that you can um put some data into to get a good guesstimation of what your genetic potential is in terms of holding uh, muscle mass so there are ones like metal hasselman's got like an ffmi calculator a fat free mass index um, calculator that will show you how much you could potentially gain in terms of muscle mass for your genetic uh, peak. So, it, so there's also another calculator that you can use from Legion as let as 
Athletics, I can't even say that word. Um, it's just a muscle gain potential calculator. It's pretty similar to Metal Hasselman's. Um, it's just there's less variables involved with it, whereas Metal Hasselman's um, has like your torso, your hip, um, your wrists, your ankle, whereas this one is a little bit more simple, um, which it probably isn't quite as accurate as Menno Hasselman's, but it's just a good way to just to go off of it and see where you're roughly at in terms of muscle mass. Again, these are just giving like guesstimations on what you can achieve naturally, uh, depending on your genetics, depending on your consistency and stuff like that. That's going to determine what you can actually achieve, but it's a good thing just to kind of go off of to see what is potentially possible naturally. Um, have you played with this? Another, what's up? Have you played with this? So I <laughs> tried to uh, measure myself, but I ended up breaking <laughs> my measuring things. So I didn't have a chance to actually put mine in for both of them. I used the Legion Athletics one just because it had less um, variables in it. And I believe for me, it was suggesting that I could possibly get up to 183 pounds being at like, um, like four or 5% body fat, which I think that's a little bit higher than what I potentially be able to do as natural. Like I can see myself maybe being on stage as a bodybuilder being like 175, maybe 178, 183 or whatever that it was saying. I feel like I never know. I, it's best to be optimistic about it. Like I know I'm going to be consistent with my training, my nutrition for these next, um, next pretty much the rest of my life. <laughs> I feel like um, I'll probably taper off with bodybuilding, like after I'm like 50 or something like that. But I, I feel like I could definitely get up to like the 175 to possibly 180, um, stepping on stage at that at that weight. All right, I'm going to play with this. So I'm going to go ahead and try the Legion Athletics one. So all these links, we'll just link it down in the YouTube link so you guys could have fun with it. So as uh, you said, the Legion Athletics one for muscle gain potential calculator. So it's a little, little bit less um, data required. So I have it out open right here. So I'm just going to go through the metric unit. I also have the height, I think. I'm 175. What is my weight? My weight today at, oh, man. holy shit, I dropped. I'm at 66 kilos. Body fat percentage. How the hell do we know that? I would just guesstimate it. Like I, I said I mine, like 15 right now. Yeah. I, I said mine was like 9% or something. So I just, I put it around there. I feel like. All right. I think I'm at 15 at least. I think, but just like, I can still see some sort of abs. So I'm guessing I'm just at 15. So it says wrist circumference at centimeters. So I have a tape measure right here. So uh, let me just measure. So CM, oh yeah, I put it in metric. Um, so CM is this, and then it says, okay, so at the at the tip of the bone, right? That's the tip of the bone. So the tip yeah. of the bone is right there. And how the hell do you do that by yourself? <laughs> yeah, I literally used like a, a regular tape measure for like measuring wood and stuff, and I just wrapped it around because I didn't have a different one. All right, so it says mine here is 16 centimeters. I'm just going to put that in 16 and then the ankle circumference. So that is also on the, 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 uh, the bone that sticks out or that's a little bit above it. I think, I think it's a little bit above that. Yeah. Um, I think I did the smallest portion of the ankle. Yeah. So yeah, right. Just before the bone. That's, I think that's where the smallest part is. So 21, that's holy shit. I'm a small dude. <laughs> okay so 21 centimeters so there is a chance that you could choose uh imperial so you can do this in inches uh and 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 feet uh compared to uh, uh this i'm just picking you know metric just for the hell of it okay so here it is generate all right so my total okay realistic steroid free stats <laughs> uh <laughs> maximum is i could go up to 91 Oh, realistic. Sorry, my bad. There's a maximum and there's a realistic. There's two columns. So which one do you want to listen to? Which one do you want to hear? We can hear both. We could just, because I think the realistic and then the one is like the maximum. I think that's for like generic outliers is right. probably what we're talking about there. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go for the realistic. I'm just going to go for the realistic first. So my realistic stats is my total body weight is 86.5 kilos. So that's, I don't know how many that depends, but you guys do the math. Okay. My lean body mass is about like 73. So it's about like what, 10 kilos, 10, 13 kilos ish, about like 20, 20 ish, 20, 30 pounds of uh, 
difference between my total body weight and my lean mass. Uh, and then it's got the stats of your chest, biceps, forearms, neck, and calves, which I did not measure. So I have nothing to compare it to. But the, it's just saying, so if we bodybuilders, natural bodybuilders, we step on stage, we are pretty much at almost, I don't know, like according to Greg Doucette, I'm going to quote him on that, is about 9 to 10% body fat being at physique competitors on stage. So if that is the case, if that is the case, and I was 62 kilos when we step on stage on Calgary, uh, I'm about... 10 kilos away from my maximal realistic steroid free stats. Those that's like 22, that's like 20 ish pounds. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. That, that, that's a, that's a, that's big it. Jump. I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's cool. Like, um, yeah. Cause like for me, I think it, it said I was, a, I could possibly yeah gain about 10, 15 ish more pounds um, than where I'm already at. So it gives it gives us some hope, some optimism in terms of what we can actually continue achieving, right? But I feel like, yeah, some of them it's it may be a little bit higher than what is capable of, but it's it's something to kind of look off to give you a general idea of what could potentially be possible, right? All right, here's the here's the fun part. I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna read this to you. This is really funny. At the bottom of the page, just before the FAQs, it says here, great news. You've achieved 72% of your predicted genetic potential for muscle gain. You may be able to gain another 17.5 kilos of muscle if you eat and train correctly. And then there's got another, uh, what is that? Oh, it just takes like bigger, too much, because it's like a bulking, stuff like that. So that's stuff that we already talked about before. So it'll actually try to wheel you in. <laughs> for uh and, and telling you on you know you know we can make this happen you know let's let's go for that <laughs> yeah that's funny that's so funny okay. yeah I, I would i would like to try the mental hasselman's one too but i feel like that may take a little bit too long to do on here just because all the different measurements for it but yeah, i, I gotta feel like you're probably first, man <laughs> get <Yeah>. measure and <laughs> <tape>. <laughs> um but yeah no that would that'd be cool um the last thing i wanted to kind of say around um, how to kind of spot like a fake natty is um, with a lot of people, especially if they've been training consistently for like 10 ish, maybe eight to 10 ish plus years. Um, and then they just have one year where they end up gaining like 20 pounds of muscle mass just solely in that year. I find that's a really good indicator that, yeah, that person has hopped on something because as you get uh, closer to your genetic potential, yeah, the progress is going to slow down a little bit over time. So if you have a random year where you just out of nowhere, like you say, you've been gaining for like year seven, year eight, year nine, you've been gaining about like maybe one to like six ish pounds each of those years. Um, and then you just have one year where you gain fucking like 20 pounds of muscle, 25 pounds of muscle. That's a very good indicator that, okay, the, like, this person has hopped on something to gain that muscle. Cause it's just, it's not possible once you're getting that close to your genetic potential. Like, yeah, you can see pretty good big jumps in your, um, build, in building muscle. If you are in your later careers or later stages of your lifting, if you haven't been training optimally, and your nutrition and all that stuff hasn't been on point for your first five or so years. And then if you like optimize things in your like sixth or seventh year of lifting, um, yeah, you can see a quite significant jump in muscle mass doing the appropriate, the proper style of training and nutrition. But yeah, if you've been training properly for that period of time, then yeah, that's, you're not going to see big jumps like that if you are natural. Um, but yeah, one last thing actually I want to compare is the, the top WM, NBF world champ compared to last year's uh, Olympia champion. So Bada Leakin, I think is how you pronounce his name. <laughs> What's your um, name? <laughs> I, believe his, I believe his, he so he won the overall the past two years at Worlds at the WNBF for the bodybuilding class. And his stage weight was 190 pounds and he was completely fucking shredded to the bone. So he's he would be like the genetic elite when it comes to the bodybuilding um and comparing him to big rammy and big rammy stage rate so big rammy um he won the olympia i guess not this past year but the year before um no, last year he won that last year right uh, yeah not the one that just passed yeah the one before that so oh shit it's yeah 2023 so it's, it's confusing because it's only a month ago 
when it actually happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, him on stage completely diced. Um, he was uh, 295 pounds. So that just goes to show the differences in the actual weight and differences in the actual muscle mass of two individuals that are, uh, I would say, have like really good work ethic that are genetically elite in terms of building muscle. Um, so that just goes to show the differences in the amount of muscle mass that you can actually achieve. And both these guys have insane physiques. We can put some pictures up above here of each of them so you guys can see what is actually possible still natural because i i feel like sometimes we tend to shit on like now like or like a lot of people tend to shit on natural bodybuilders and oh they can't achieve great physiques when you can 100 percent achieve a great physique it's just yeah you're probably not going to be able to be you or you're 100 not going to be able to be 295 pounds shredded naturally but yeah you could potentially get up to 180 190 depending on your height and everything and be like very lean um, and have an awesome physique naturally. So there's a lot of different components to it, but I just want to give you guys a perspective of the elite on both sides. Yeah, so I, I think that's very, very well put together. And um, although, you know, this topic is, and I wouldn't say controversial, but it's, you know, a very interesting topic. I think it's just underrated. Uh, please do not come at, at us and sending us photos of uh, other people that you see and ask us if they're natty or not. It, it is sometimes very difficult to tell as uh, we've given you the parameters of some of the stuff that to look for. Uh, and also, you know, some people might have just been on a very small dosage of PEDs, but it doesn't reflect on their physical uh, you know, on their physical appearance that much uh, due to its uh, very small dosage. Uh, but in a, nat a competitive natural bodybuilding level, they're still in a banned substance uh, list. Therefore, they cannot compete. You know, they might look like, uh, you know, they're very, they're, they, they might look pretty damn natural to you. And then maybe they're, you, you may think that they have uh, just very, very good genetics. And, um, you know, who knows, who knows? No, no, nobody knows, you know, if only the person using it would potentially know. Um, well, of course, I mean, the, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they would know. And, um, you know, it's, 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 I just wanted to say we we want to, even though you are on PEDs or not, if you are on, uh, you can be discreet about it. You know, it's you don't really have to tell the world that, oh, I'm on PEDs. You know, it's not something that I know you have to uh, expose yourself to. It's unnecessary, honestly. Um, but I mean, if you are, uh, I would just say that please don't hide it. And just trying to, if somebody asks you, hey, man, are you a PD? Just, just say yes. It's not that we're going to despise you or you're going to be part of a, a small population where everybody just boycotts you. No, that's not the case. I mean, uh, what Brandon was just, we were just saying earlier, yeah, there are advantage and disadvantage of it. But we're just saying that as, uh, uh, you know, the stats of it, we're not saying that one is better or the other. You know, we're in bodybuilding. Everybody does the same. We train just as hard. Everybody just train just as hard. As you said, Brandon, you train, you like enhance bodybuilders. You spend a lot more time in the gym. Therefore, that's your hard work right there. Okay. We don't yeah. spend as much time. You spend much time and you more time training. And there's a lot more restrictive diets compared to a natural bodybuilder. So, you know, we get to enjoy food that we like and still make gains. You know, you have to be more restrictive, but you make even bigger gains. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and that's the thing, like, cause too many people think on the other side of the spectrum where like, Oh, like since you're taking stuff, you don't have to work as hard. Like you're like, people aren't working as hard cause they're taking stuff. Like, yeah, there may be a small group of people that are like that. Um, but you still, if you want to achieve like the best possible physique and be the best of the best at the Olympia stage, you have to do everything that is necessary um, to achieve a, your genetic peak. Um, so yeah, most of the guys that are, taking stuff are working very hard and train their asses off and their nutrition is uh proper but some people do there are other people that are just average gym goers that think that oh i can just take um these drugs i don't have to do anything i'm gonna be able to this muscle mass when that isn't necessarily the case like there are some guys that um aren't natural and they have uh 
a lot of uh, like their physique is a lot worse than a lot of like the top natural guys. So there are there is that component of it as well. But. Yeah. So I think it really sums up on you know where where we want to put uh you know the finals full stop on this episode. I think it's been a monster episode. I think you know we've uh, delivered a lot of great information. Uh, for you know you to judge you know we're not we're not judging we're not saying anything I don't think anybody should be judgmental on any of this uh, but these are just tools for us to uh, help us understand what everybody's going through and what your target goal is going to be uh, is there anything else you want to add uh, no man I think that's everything yeah yeah okay guys uh, so we're going to close it down here I hope you guys enjoyed it and again uh, a lot of this, uh, if you are listening on Spotify or any other Apple podcast or anything like that, please leave us a review. We greatly appreciate that. And also, this is going to be on the YouTube channel, which is going to come a little bit later after uh, some, uh, you know, very professional editing. Uh, and then after that, uh, we will link on some of the links in the YouTube description below. Feel free to leave us a rating and subscribe to our channel to show your support. That's all we ask for. Okay, it's nothing that's going to cost you anything. Uh, so please subscribe to us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week.